Today I'd like to explore the nature of the four equal divisions of the perfect fifth tuning, which is close to what Ian Weiss and I speculated about at the Charlotte New Music Festival. He sort of came up with this idea of an 177 cent step size, which I thought was an interesting one to pick. It's a little bit like seven tone equal temperament in a way, but some variants of the tuning can yield much better results than seven tone equal temperament, or perhaps the original Weigel Weiss, as it's called. Okay, so first let's talk about uh, the original tuning itself. So basically, what we have, you know, starting from C, of course, I've mapped um, a seven equal tempered like repeating scale to the white keys. So what I can do is, first, I can actually play something in seven tone equal temperament to give you an idea of what things will sound like. So of course in seven tone equal temperament we actually have repeating octaves and its perfect fifth divides equally into four. And the perfect fifth is, you know, quite shimmery and a little bit out of tune. Still fifth like. The difference between this and Weigelweiss, you'll probably be able to hear it with the octaves being gone. So it sounds like it just stretches more because it does. You can hear that it doesn't have an octave, which is nice for a non-octave tuning. Now here's original Weigelweiss with the 177 cent step. This gives us a nice, close to in tune perfect fifth that's a bit sharp. It's about 708. And then near just major sixth right here. And then our major third is pretty good too, as long as we go up an octave. And of course, as we keep going, the notes get farther and farther off. So the question I wanted to answer about Weigelweiss with tuning continuum was the same question that I wanted to answer with uh, five equal divisions of the perfect fifth. That is, uh, do we reach a point where after some massive number of notes, we actually get an octave again, and can we change the size of the fifth we divide to sort of reflect opposite sides of that coin? So. I did figure it out in Weigelweiss or four equal divisions of the perfect fifth. Interestingly, the Weigelweiss continuum is a lot larger than the one for the five equal divisions of the perfect fifth. Okay, so of course I've been mentioning the original Weigelweiss itself with the 708 perfect fifth, but we also can have uh, four equal divisions of the perfect perfect fifth, which is about 702. And the main thing that this improves in Weigelweiss is it makes our major chord more in tune. In fact, I think it's about perfect. Again, I haven't checked the numbers, I'm just going off my ear here. Of course, it has to be in the same voicing in this situation. Uh, here's a comparison of the Weigelweiss chord versus uh, the uh, four equal divisions of the perfect fifth chord. So here's Weigelweiss. Perfect fifth. I actually do seem closer than I thought, now that I remember. Uh, maybe up here. So yeah, you can hear that the, the major thirds are just a little bit different there. Um, but yeah, Weigelweiss and the four equal division of the perfect fifth are actually very close. So, what kinds of other divisions can we have? Well, it seems easiest to adjust Weigelweiss so that we get a quadruple octave. So, something like this, where, where we hit our pseudo-octaves and keep going. So here's one octave, two octaves, three octaves, four octaves. See how this note, now that the fifth is uh, sharper, 
this is close. So if, if we think of this as a seven note equally divided framework and want this note to be our quadruple octave, then we need our perfect fifth to be about 711.1 repeating cents, which gives us a step size of 177.7 repeating. So that's quite close. Um, so that gives us that uh, nice quadruple octave, but it also makes our major chords a little bit more out of tune. You can hear that that shimmers a little bit more compared to original Weigel Wies. But yeah, there it is. So we have a quadruple octave. Now, what happens when we go the other way is quite interesting. Of course, uh, we can play through the continuum. I started at the highest one, 711. Let's do original Weigel Wies, 708. Original Weigelwies can actually kind of almost sound like it's there, but the octave is shrunken. Now, if we equally divide the actual perfect fifth itself, we don't get that quadruple octave. So perhaps in Weigelwies, it would be an interesting property to try and define that distance as octave-like, because then that would make it more unique than simply dividing a perfect fifth into four equal parts. And perhaps uh, the original Y Luis itself is the best compromise between in tune sounding major chords and getting that interval to actually sound like an octave. Probably the best place would be somewhere in between, like 710 or 709. That's our perfect fifth ish. Okay, so our next drawing is 694 cents, a mean tone fifth. Startlingly, of course, you know, mean tone works a different way, so. We don't really get in tune major chords exactly. We get major thirds that are quite low. So now we're getting closer to actually lining up with the octave because our next rung, of course, is seven tone equal temperament. So that's just gonna line up right with the octave. Now, in order to actually get the next highest note of seven to equal a quadruple octave, our fifth has to go startlingly low so that it's quite out of tune, uh, even on the low end for a Mavilla perfect fifth. So here, 674, our perfect fifth's quite out of tune. So we're almost there, and then with this last one we get there. So that sounds quite bizarre, uh, and might even be considered a different sort of thing. So there's an interesting thing that happens in these very flatty ends of the continuum, because of course the perfect fifth is going to be too flat to sound even remotely in tune here, at the low end of the spectrum where we have this quadruple octave up here. But the perfect fourth has straightened itself out now that this is so flat. You see, if we have a perfect fifth that's equally divided, our perfect fourth ends up being a little bit too sharp to be near a four over three interval or just perfect fourth, which means that the flatter our perfect fifth gets, the flatter our perfect fourth gets. So as our as our perfect fifth, you know, it's perfect right here, uh, as it gets flatter and flatter, getting more out of tune, perfect fourth gets more and more in tune and behaves. So observe. See, in seven tone equal temperament, the perfect fourth and perfect fifth are sort of equally bad in this context. Ooh, almost perfect now. Even though perfect fifth is very flat, and now... So that's pretty interesting. In fact, 
it might even be worth it to consider uh, these very, very flat fifth ends of the spectrum to be three equal divisions of the perfect fourth instead. So that could be an interesting way to turn it. Okay, so for the last part, I'll just go over uh, a few more intervals that I thought were in tune. So interestingly, in the equal division of the perfect fifth, we have an 11 over 8 interval that sounds pretty in tune. You can hear how that snaps into place. And I think in original Weibowies this doesn't happen as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely, if you're thinking about just intonation, that's where I think the original Weigowies doesn't do as good of a job as the four equal divisions of the perfect fifth itself. Again, we can compare. Yeah, you hear that it is, uh, I think it's it's writing a little bit sharp in the Weigowies version, just because that 11 over 8 is so far out, it's going to do that. And then I think in the 7-11, it might not even work that way. Yeah, in the 711, it doesn't really sound like it's approximating the 11th harmonic at all, but more like a sharp 4. So, yeah. Okay, I think those are most of the interesting observations I made about the tunings. I've already talked about the major chords, and of course, what you can do, the, the immediate thing to do in Weigelweiss that's really obvious, that's kind of fun, is if you just have major chords and keep going up. you eventually just slide out of this area where things are supposed to be in the octave and you get into really interesting territory. So I think that uh, is really promising actually and I'm sure other people have done work on it, but I definitely think that this and the five equal divisions of the perfect fifth seem to be two really promising non-octave scales that aren't Bull and Pierce or the Wendy Carlos scales. Coincidentally, I've been exploring these two non-octave scales via connections with composers I met at the Charlotte New Music Festival, so I'm planning to write something for non-octave dulcimer and keyboard, because then I could just record it and play it. So I'd be really interested in doing that and creating the notation and probably coming up with some further collaborations with both Chase Jordan, who suggested 5 ED perfect fifth, and Ian, who suggested uh, Weigel Weiss, which is close to 4 ED perfect fifth, but a little bit different.